You are listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. Hey everyone, Michael here with Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast, and today's episode is Season 2, Episode 21. If you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe, then head on over to HelloCupcakeIt'sMe.com to give the blog some love, like and subscribe over there, and then make sure that you check out the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash HelloCupcakeIt'sMe. Like, subscribe, and click the little bell notification icon to get updated. I update um, my videos two times a week. And uh, make sure that you follow me on all the different social medias. Also, check out my upcoming book, Carpe Diem Scroto, 365 Daily Affirmations, scheduled for publication November 2024. And so, without much more ado, let's get into it, shall we? So, today, the reason that uh, the podcast is getting updated late is because it has been yet another hyper-emotional day for me. Um, And I started off the day with um, meeting with the PR team. And then I had another virtual meeting with um, a gentleman who works for a healthcare um, industry and um, not going to give out too much about that, but just had an interview with him and uh, then just dealing with the sheer amount of emotional drama that's just been going on in my life for the last week now and uh, everything in between. So y'all know that I have a very strained relationship with my biological mother at this point. If you followed Hello Cupcake for any period of time, you will have known that or whatever if you are new uh sorry but you're in like season 64 of my drama with her but anyways um so today i well let me back it up to last week last thursday i spent two and a half hours on the phone with her trying to get her a new uh bank card and it's not a traditional bank it's uh one of those reloadable uh money cards and uh she was in over mode or overload mode and just freaking out and i need to pay my rent and i need to do this and i need to do that and i need to pay this person back and i need to pay that person back and just like going on and on and I'm like you lose your freaking card all the damn time so it's nobody's fault but your own you cannot get pissed off at the people because it takes an act of congress to get you a new card like if you want a new card you that you can easily replace you need to get yourself an actual bank account not some janky reloadable card like you know even though it has the visa green light logo on the back of it or whatever else it's still kind of janky you know you it's not a traditional bank it's not a financial institution even though they allow for money to be deposited and withdrawn and all that other stuff it's just not as backed up and as secure as a traditionally FDIC insured bank. So last Thursday I spent 
two and a half hours on the phone with her trying to get her out of crisis mode and get her all set up. So they said that they would send out the new card that it was going to take two business days. And so I know how companies work. But if somebody says that at 4 p.m., they're going to give her a cigarette and they don't do so until 4.30 p.m. They're the biggest pieces of shit in the universe and the entire world comes to a screeching halt and blah, blah. So I told her because she needed to pay her landlord, I said, tell the landlord that you will get your money order to them by Friday or Saturday of this week to let them know that you had lost your bank card and that they are replacing it, but it's going to take a few days for it to get to you. Well, the lady said that it would be here Tuesday. Well, I don't give a damn what the lady said. What the lady says versus what actually happens, that's, you know, neither here nor there. So always, always give yourself extra time. And she's like, okay, I'll do what I, I'll see what I can do. I'm like, well, do or don't. I mean, you know, you're 73 years old. You could figure out how to pay your damn rent. You've been doing it your whole life. Like, this is no different. So, um, anyways, she calls me back. She's like, okay, yeah, the landlord said that I have until the 7th to pay it back and asked me a whole bunch of questions that I really didn't want to answer. And I'm like, well, hopefully you answered them and weren't shitty and a bitch to them. So, anyways, fast forward to Wednesday. She calls me up in an absolute panic. My card didn't show up and blah 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 and god ding this and god ding that and blah I'm just like woman stop I told you to call me Tuesday if it did not show up why are you calling me on Wednesday because it did not show up she neglected to tell me that they needed to have a key to get into her apartment that the apartment is locked at the street level well all they have to do is push a button and they can find me well when we called the company back to find out what was going on come to find out the person who helped us previously put in the wrong address and the wrong apartment number so when they showed up at the apartment number, or when they showed up at her apartment building, there was no apartment number for that delivery driver to make the delivery. So it went to a holding facility right up the street from her house. So we finally get all that situated. We get the address on her card changed. We get all of that situated. And they're like, yeah, it's going to be there tomorrow, Thursday, today. Um, but, you know, it could be there at 8, 8, as early as 8 a.m. or as late as 5 p.m. Okay, I'll be downstairs at 8 a.m. waiting for them. I said, no, listen to what she said. Earliest is 8 a.m., latest is 5 p.m. PM. If by 5.30 p.m. you do not have your card, call me back so we can get back in touch with them and figure out WTF, right? So, two and a half hours on Thursday of last week, two and a half hours last night on top of all the crap that's going on in my life right now the PR stuff the meeting that I had with the guy from the healthcare place and everything in between I'm just like oh my god 
I don't have the mental bandwidth. I'm tired. I, I'm just exhausted. I was already tired and exhausted prior to all of this, but like, I'm just too much. I am in overload mode right now. So yeah, that's what's been happening on a more positive note. Tuesday night, um, we did really well at trivia. Um, we were holding our own for most of the night. I think there was like two categories where we completely bombed, but I was really proud of our group and we had some new players, which was really nice. And everyone always, uh, cracks jokes and like laughs at me because I have seven devices that I use. All of it is like ancient technology, but the fact that it still connects to the Wi-Fi and uh, allows for the app to be updated, I use it. And, you know, once I'm no longer able to use it the way that I am, I'm going to be getting rid of it. And um, so just had a really good Tuesday night. And uh, another part of like what's kind of going on that's leading to all this stress is like trying to get my house under wraps. You know, there's a lot of stuff that I need to do. And um, I've even been kicking around the idea of moving and moving into my very first apartment. Um, Every time that I've ever lived somewhere, it's always been with somebody. And even though I've lived in my current house for the better part of 12, 13 years, um, it still has never 100% felt like my place. And so I've never had to pound the pavement and look for an apartment and all of that other stuff on my own. And, um, I'm really, really, really freaking nervous about that idea because I have come to the con- I've come to the understanding that I am a very loud person because all of the places that we've ever lived in my whole life, we've only lived, I've only lived in an an apartment three times in my whole life. And, you know, the one time was when my um, dad and my biological mom got a divorce and then every other time has been like I stayed with my sister in an apartment once basically and then um, every other time you know we've lived together in houses on things that we didn't really have to maintain our noise level or what have you so I could be up at like two or three o'clock in the morning listening to music and doing whatever in my bedroom and not having to worry about it. And because I'm super active at night versus being more active during the daytime and apartments having quiet hours, then, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of issue getting used to that because if I'm in a manic spiral and for whatever reason decide that I need to clean my house at two o'clock in the morning because I can't sleep, then I'm going to be cleaning my house at two o'clock in the morning. It just means that I'm not going to be able to vacuum or do any of the stuff that I normally would. I just have to be a little bit more like inconspicuous with what I do when I do it and how I do it. The other aspect that's kind of scary for me is the fact that I do a lot of arts and crafts. And one of the arts and crafts that I do is ever, I started this last year, but um, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon, is I started making witches brooms for Halloween. And my friends put on an event for the last couple of years called the Witches Walk. And so I make these brooms and I sold them last year at the witch's walk. And it was a huge success. 
And that money that I got from that, I was able to help my friends pay off some of their outstanding debts and was also able to um, put a little bit aside for Christmas. I didn't make that much. Like, I was able, like I said, to give some money to a friend who needed it. And then I was able to... um, take care of Christmas a little bit. So um, I plan on making the brooms again this year. And I wanted to get a start on it like right around this time. But the plants that I use to make the brooms are in the process of budding right now. And I can't use it with all of the flowers and stuff that are on it right now. So I got to wait until they stop budding. Then I can use it afterwards. Um, but anyways, you know, having my, my area to do arts and crafts in, that is like a big thing for me. And making those brooms takes a lot of work and, it can get messy. So, you know, I have a front porch that's covered and I can sit out there listening to music, watching the cars drive by as I'm working on my brooms and putting them together. And then I just use my leaf blower and blow all the like trimmings and stuff out into the yard and call it good. Well, I'm not going to have that option or that luxury once I move into something new. So, um, there's going to be a definite change in life if I do decide to move, but I am starting to get to the point where I'm preparing myself for the inevitable move. And the reason I say inevitable is because, you know, at any given moment, my landlord He is in his late 80s. His wife is about the same age. She's had cancer like on and off her whole life. And in the 16 years that I have been their tenant, or I'm sorry, 15 years that I've been their tenant, she's had her cancer come out of remission and battling it like four or five times. So it's like pretty severe. And, you know, either one of them could go at any moment. And I've noticed over the last couple of years that he's slowed down in the way that he is moving and he's walking with a limp and he's like not able to get up and down off the ladders going up on the roofs to sweep off the roofs from the pine needles and stuff. And just some of the things that he is that he can and can't do anymore. And, um, you know, beforehand he was up and down the ladders and he was doing all the things. Now he's starting to have his grandkids help him out a little bit more. And he's starting to hire people to come out and take care of things, which, you know, his generation, they don't do that. They are like the handy people. They're like building houses and stuff, take their little afternoon break for lunch and then come back and hit it strong and then clock back off at like four or five. So like he's got that type of work ethic, even at his age and he's freaking awe inspiring and reminds me so much of my grandparents. But, um, anyways, so, you know, at, with my rent being month to month and his advanced age and both of their health declining, you know, at any given moment, I could get notified by the family that they have passed away and they no longer want to be landlords and they want to sell the property. And, you know, then I, then I'm out and I have to then fi- figure something else out. I hope that did not just come across on my recording. And if it did, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, anyways. So, yeah. Um, you know, I don't talk about politics and spirituality and stuff like that all that often on any of my 
channels and any of my podcasts or whatever. But, um, it's with, with the way things are going, I just don't know what to expect and when to expect it and, um, call it my guardian angel, call it God, call it whatever you want to call it, a message from the universe who, who or whatever. Um, I heard a voice uh, about a year and a half ago telling me, you're not going to be here in five years. Don't worry about it. And that was it. And I was like, well, I need more clarification. Like, how do you mean I'm not going to be here in five years? Does that mean that I'm going to die? I'm not going to physically be here at like this address. What the hell, you know, universe, God, spirit, whatever you you need to, you need to tell me more. Hello. (laughs) Is this thing on type situation? And so, um, I don't know. There's a lot of positives, a few negatives, and the what if game and the what if game is a motherfucker right now let me tell you because i'm doing that whole well what if this happens what if that happens what if this happens what if this happens and if this happens then this could happen and if this could happen then this could happen and blah blah and i'm driving myself fucking insane i'll be dead honest and it's part of my bipolar it's part of my mental health and it keeps pulling me down into this freaking spiral and um it's just been hyper emotional and so what i'm saying when you hear me talking about it being a hyper emotional type of time period or whatever that is what i'm talking about i'm talking about the fact that i am just stressed out because my mental health is not where it needs to be And because my sorry, I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty with my microphone. So okay, I'm sorry about that. My microphone decided to die right in the middle of all of this. So just yet another yay me moment. So, anyways, so what I'm talking about, my mental health being, like, whatever, or that it's an emotional day, or it's been emotional or whatever, that's what I'm talking about, is the fact that there's just been so much going on, and I'm stressed out and pulled in 43 different directions, but anyways, guys, um... We are going on 24 minutes now, and if you've stuck through to this, I am so thankful for you, and thank you so much for listening, and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments section down below, and like I said, um, follow me on all the social medias, check out my upcoming book, www.cdsthebook.com, and until next time, I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. You have been listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. Please make sure to check back often as new episodes are released bi-weekly. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to send a message to Hello Cupcake, It's Me at gmail.com. And until next time, stay happy, safe, and keep doing the best you can with what you have been given.